Well, the German foreign minister is in South Africa for intra-governmental talks that are expected to be dominated by the war in Ukraine. Annalena Baerbock met with her South African counterpart Nalidi Pandor this morning at the start of biannual talks. In opening remarks, Baerbock said that because of their histories, the two countries shared an appreciation of democracy, a reference to the Nazi dictatorship and the apartheid regime. Germany wants South Africa to drop its neutral stance toward Russia's war in Ukraine. Baerbock said it was in South Africa's interest to end Russia's attack on Ukraine. Here's some of what she had to say. Russia's war of aggression has not only brought terrible suffering over the people of Ukraine, it has also slashed a wound that reaches far beyond Europe, worsening a food and energy crisis in many parts of the world, in many parts of Africa. For this suffering to end, the war must end. For the war to end, Russia must stop the bombing and withdraw its soldiers. This war is, and we have discussed this already, is an attack on the UN Charter, on the very rules that bind and protect us all. Our correspondent Nina Haase is travelling with the German Foreign Minister. Nina, tell us more about what stood out to you in the press conference that's just taken place. Well, of course, it was an extremely interesting press conference because, of course, um, this is Annalena Baerbock's very first visit to South Africa. And you have to be honest, last year, Germany and South Africa, or if you want, uh, the West and South Africa, clashed over this issue because uh, South Africa just refused to condemn Putin's actions in international um, uni units in uh, the Forum of the United Nations uh, General Assembly for for example, and uh, the West was disappointed. So today is an effort to try and get back into a conversation, try and understand each other's position better. And so, of course, th there are lots of topics on the agenda between the two countries. They have this binational commission that's meeting every two years, and they discuss issues like equality, also the fight against the climate crisis, energy partnerships, etc. But what dominated definitely today was to try and find a way of talking about this very touchy issue of how to position yourself when it comes to Putin's war of aggression against Ukraine and really try and keep an open mind about this. So, Nina, are the two sides any closer in their position on the war? Well, these are two very strong-willed women, Annalena Baerbock and her South African counterpart, um, Mrs. Pandor, and they there was not a, a, a change in position as such. Annalena Baerbock maintained that it is vital that the world understands that this is not just Europe's problem, that uh, Putin is acting in a way that is affecting the entire world. She mentioned the food crisis again. She said that if dictators get away with this uh, sort of behaviour, then we will see more wars of conquest around the world. And this is not something that democracies can accept, the violation of international rules, etc. At the same time, Mrs. Pandor argued, we want everybody to stop putting pressure on us. We want the world to see that we see this as something where peace stands at the forefront. And uh, South Africa, together with other countries here on the continent, has put forward a peace initiative. So South Africa wants to be taken seriously as a peace broker. And Mrs. Pandor stressed the fact that there are very few countries around the world at the moment that manage to actually talk to both President Zelensky and President Putin and uh, that South Africa could play a mediating role in this process. So this is something where, as uh, she also mentioned again last week, Copenhagen summit where South Africa played a very big role and uh, she said that this is something that uh, should not be underestimated. OK, Chief Political Correspondent Nina Haza, thank you very much for chiming in. So you're... Sorry about the audio quality there, but let's pick up on uh, one point that Nina was making because South Africa claims it is neutral with regards to the Russian invasion of Ukraine, but that stance has come under scrutiny, not least after US claims it supplied arms to Russia. President Cyril Ramaphosa has announced an investigation into those allegations, and as Nina mentioned, he recently visited both Russia and Ukraine on that mediation mission. <laughs> an African peace mission to Russia. 
Earlier this month, a delegation of seven African nations, led by South Africa, tried to persuade Vladimir Putin that the Ukraine war must end. Before they got there, they'd visited Ukraine to plead for peace. But with neither Kyiv nor Moscow willing to budge, this visit accomplished little. The West is already suspicious of South Africa's claim that it's playing a neutral role in the conflict. In February, Pretoria teamed up with Moscow and Beijing to hold joint naval exercises. Three months later, a US diplomat accused South Africa of delivering arms and ammunition to this sanctioned Russian ship. South Africa has had a long friendship with Russia. Moscow's top diplomat, Sergei Lavrov, visited the country in January. Relations date back to when the Soviet Union helped South Africa's freedom fighters in their struggle against apartheid. That history is part of the reason Pretoria refuses to condemn Moscow for the invasion of Ukraine. But it's not just South Africa where Russia has been cultivating relations. Moscow's influence extends across much of the African continent. And it isn't just about politics. It's been giving military support and selling equipment and arms in return for access to energy and natural resources. Russian mercenaries, including the infamous Wagner Group, have also been operating in several countries on the continent. They include Mali, Libya, Sudan and Central African Republic. And despite recent events in Russia, it doesn't look like countries such as South Africa will change their relations with Moscow anytime soon.